and we can go look at the results. Look at this. That's the, I'm back to one proportion. 518 out of 1,155 testing P equal to 1,5. That's uh, 0.5. Here I am. There's a little thing here in the R. We need to add in some correction. It's, we're not going to use time on that. There is a remark box in the notes about this whole continuity correction. It's a difficult thing conceptually. Continuity correction is trying to make these approximations that we only that we use, I mean the rule of thumbs n should be all the observed should be or the expected should be larger than five. Maybe sometimes we can uh, loosen that assumption by applying some corrections of what we do. So there are something called continuity correction, and R is intelligent enough to that if you don't ask it to what you, it should do, the default is that it will do continuity correction. So continuity correction is a nice thing generally. However, it's a bit complicated. So I don't teach you the details of continuity uh, correction. So to make R give exactly what I'm teaching you, I should ask it not to do this continuity correction. If n is pretty large, it doesn't make a difference. It's just something that could make a difference if n becomes a bit small, smallish. So it's a way to do something reasonable, even though maybe we are in this area of, of uh, n not being quite large enough for the validity of these methods. It's uh, just something I need to uh, mention. We only have so much time, so we decided not to try to teach you the details of continuity corrections, but you know, have to know that they exist, right? That's the point. But you don't need to know the details of them. That's the point. So. What about the test that I performed in my example? Here I test the 50-50 left-handedness based on the 10 out of 100 data, right? I showed you the formula for that in my slides. Let me see the result. Actually, note that it doesn't give me, I gave you a set statistic of eight, right? Do you remember that? Now here it actually does something else. It gives me a chi-square statistics, which is the square of the set, 64, 8 squared. But it's actually the same thing. It just squares the number and use the chi-square instead of the normal. It's the same thing. It's just squaring things. OK. The pill study. You have to put the data. We put the data from the pill study as a two by two matrix, right? And then you can give names or you cannot. Names just make nice tables. It's not important for the actual analysis. Here, I just gave some column names and some row names for the output tables. You may or may not do that. And then I could use the prop test again. This is a two sample use of the prop test function proportions test. Let's see what happens. Prop test. That's the one on my slide, right? That's the four element based uh, chi square st statistic. With a and here you get the p value now, very pretty low, pretty low p value. Actually, you also get the confidence interval that I shared with you for the two proportions. Uh, that I, you get that also. It's, so it's a bit like. Uh, it's the t-test uh, function for proportions, this one, right? It's, it's not g-test, but it's prop test. But it does the same thing, compares testing confidence intervals. And the two proportions that I also shared with you is coming out of that. Yes. Actually, um, what I show here is a, another function. 
There is also a more general function called chi-square test that we would typically go use if we have multi-way tables or uh, multi-category uh, tables. This also gives, now I just call it here, here I save the result, and I'm just showing to you that actually, as part of the computation of this, uh, the function tells us these expected values such that we can check whether they are all larger than five, right? Let's see. Chi-square test, that's, that was the other test. It actually, I mean, it, it gives the same result, of course, as it should. It's just the same computation in a different function. But then we can actually look at the expected values because it actually saves the expected values to us. So we could go check the expected values, are all of those expected values larger than five? Yes, they are. And actually, this larger than five is built into the R procedure. So if they are not all larger than five, you will get a warning. It's up to you whether you want to use it, but you get a warning by R. So it's, also, it's not just us, who, it's just it's me giving you this. It is also built into the, the procedure. So it's a nice procedure. It warns you if you're in the limit of what you should do. Now it becomes very easy to go to multi-category tables, R by C contingency tables. You just need, for instance, the poll data. You put it into a three by three matrix of data. You may or may not name them. If you're just, if you're in a hurry, don't worry about names. Um, just put them into a three by three matrix and then you may look at percentages, but let's, why don't we just, you may look at plots, but you could go directly to chi-square test on the three by three matrix, and let's see the result. So multiple proportions, chi-square test, multiple categories also, polls, Column percentages, you, we don't really need that. The plots didn't work. Ah, that's because I have something else stored. You can recognize this. I stored the Sonhistuson's data somewhere, so, uh, but let's do the chi-square test. On the polls, that was the polls data. Is there a difference in distributions between those three different times of polling the population here? Is there a difference of those three sets of proportions? No, there is not, because the p-value is not smaller than 5%. So it's quite easy to move on from there. Okay, I'll stop the R thing here. Just want to mention that I, I shared this malformations data. That's also something I added in last night. So if you, start, if you downloaded things before last night, you won't have that as part of it. But I added that in. So you can actually redo, I, I just copied and pasted the data from Sonny Stewson's uh, table, and I added in those confidence limits that I have taught you to do today, and you can see this. And finally, I did the chi-square test of those 12 proportions. Are those 12 proportions starting at 4%, ending at around 5%, are those significantly different over the 12 years? I don't think you're surprised when you look at the confidence intervals. Indeed so. We are, we are very, very certain that these are different. You need to play with me just two minutes here. I'm not going to let you out of the room until 20 people answer this one. Come on, it's your last chance of playing with me. I'll meet you next week for a summary. This is the end of new stuff in this course, actually. I'll meet you for a summary. We'll discuss exam, maybe five minutes on the evaluation. Uh, I'll, I'll share the plan for the next time with you in, an, in a message. 20 people, come on. Comparing two observed proportions. 
corresponds to analyzing a two by two contingency table by the chi square test. True or false? Thank you. You're okay. Good luck out there and see you in a week for a summary.